Today, we're gonna to be talking all about the brand Pierre Moss. We're gonna tell you everything you need to know, and we're gonna take a look at some key pieces that show what they're all about. So let's get into it. But before we get going, I've looked into it, and a very, very tiny percentage of you are actually subscribed to the channel. So it doesn't cost you anything. If you like the content I make, just click that subscribe button, and I thank you profusely. Where on earth do you start when you're talking about Pierre Moss? I mean, you have to go straight to the brains of the operation, designer and creative director Kirby Jean Raymond. And the dichotomy of this dude is that he cares so much that he just doesn't care. He's outspoken, he's bombastic, and he's unapologetic in his beliefs. He's the kind of guy that will walk into a billion dollar company and demand the keys to the kingdom. But we'll get into that in a bit. His background has been dissected a hundred times over in the fashion press. Kirby's from Brooklyn, born to Haitian parents. He taught himself how to make clothes basically by accident because the sneaker designing class he wanted to take shut down. He later landed a gig working under the designer Kay Unger. He also interned for tons of pretty bougie brands like Marc Jacobs, Theory, Kenneth Cole, and more. Despite all of this, he couldn't land a full-time job and ended up working for AT&T of all places. I think it's safe to say that a white designer with that much experience would have landed a cushy role at a top brand in no time. However, Kirby was essentially forced by the system to go out on his own. In 2013, he created a company called God, which eventually turned it into Pierre Moss, an outlet to merge art and social justice with a laser focus on bringing black stories to the forefront of the brand's vision. Along with other black designers who are now household names or close to it, like Virgil Abloh of Off-White and Louis Vuitton, or Shane Oliver of Hood by Air, Kirby brought a new culture to high fashion, one that just doesn't happen to be black, but puts that identity at the forefront of everything they do. He's likened this party crashing to the Latin explosion in music where Ricky Martin and Mark Anthony came onto the scene. But things didn't just get off to a hot start for Pierre Moss. Early on in the company's life, Kirby made a business deal that, at the time, seemed like it would save the brand. Instead, he lost a majority stake in his company in exchange for barely enough money to stay afloat. Just as it looked like things would collapse entirely for Pierre Moss, an unlikely ally came into the picture, Reebok. They had a firm belief in Kirby's vision, and now on top of designing sneaker lines, Kirby has a full Reebok by Pierre Moss clothing line. This works perfectly because it provides an entry-level price point to the world that Kirby creates with Pierre Moss. This investment from Reebok gave Kirby the capital he needed to buy his company back. From there, he rethought his whole approach. Before, he was making the business moves that any young company would. He was selling stockists whatever products they wanted. It didn't matter which products or who the stockist was. The problem here is the albatross that is the streetwear label. With the tides of Supreme and Off-White raising all like-minded ships, most of these retailers were only interested in stocking Pierre Moss's t-shirts and hoodies, almost an insult to the impressive breadth of products they create. This situation went against everything Kirby believes in the idea of creating experiences around the clothes. So he cut down drastically on Pierre Moss's retail partnerships. Now you'll only find their stuff in stores that are willing to carry their full line, as well as the Reebok by Pierre Moss subline. Throughout his journey, Kirby has stood by his principles. If you want him, you need to accept all of him. Those principles go far beyond clothes and into social issues. From the beginning, Pierre Moss has been a brand with a message. They've done so much good that it's hard to pick a single example. They've used entire collections to amplify the message of Black Lives Matter, long before the killing of George Floyd tragically thrust it into the spotlight. The brand's Reebok Experiment 4 shoes, itself a fantastically original like sci-fi take on the chunky sneaker aesthetic, was made to benefit the Innocence Project. The brand pledged money to small minority-owned businesses as the coronavirus pandemic took hold and helped supply PPE to frontline workers. All of this is impossible to argue against. So why do some people dislike Kirby so much? Of course, there's the all lives matter crowd whose inherent racism will always put them at odds with the designer. 
but many purportedly open-minded people within the fashion industry also seem to have their issues with him. To look deeper into this, I want to look at a situation that is, in the grand scheme of things, like a tiny blip in the life of Kirby Jean Raymond. But I think it speaks volumes about the ways in which standing for your convictions can also inherently put you into an adversarial position. In 2019, Kirby appeared as a guest judge on an episode of the Netflix show Next in Fashion. By the time some of you see this, that show may be a long forgotten relic, so to set the stage, it was basically a Project Runway ripoff show hosted by Alexa Chung and the Queer Eye Guy who calls himself a designer even though he did so just for Zara. Ugh. Side note, honestly, no hate to Tan France, but it is pretty damn easy to take shots at his expense. Anyway, one of the key innovations of this show was that for most episodes, the designers worked in teams of two. One of the teams happened to be comprised of two women of color, Kiki and Farai. Despite lots of experience with proto streetwear brands like FUBU, they'd been struggling for many episodes and were clearly on their way out. In the reality show Paradigm, the episode that Kirby appeared on was the one in which they were destined to be sent home. They put out some admittedly lackluster clothing and were on the chopping block for the nth time. But what happened? Kirby walked off the set in protest. Instead of accepting that this is all but scripted and these contestants are quote unquote supposed to be sent home, he stood up for them and refused to be implicit in dashing their fashion dreams. This being a reality show, Kirby was edited to look pretty stuck up and petulant honestly. But when you really break it down, he had great reasons to take that stand. Even I think Kiki and Farai should have gone home. I thought their clothes looked straight up bad. But that's kind of the point Kirby was trying to make. Those clothes aren't for me. They're imbued with a lifetime of black experience, unlike anything I could ever understand as a white guy. In that sense, he felt, how could he possibly tell them that they weren't good enough when they were simply following their identity and their culture? Kirby Jean Raymond stands up for black culture even to a fault, even when it makes him look like a whiny baby on reality TV. And good on him for being unafraid to do so because he feels it so intensely. And that leads us to the latest chapter in Kirby and Pierre Moss's history, Your Friends in New York. What is that? Well, no one really knows yet exactly. However, there are a few key things we do know that make this new endeavor really noteworthy. The first is that it's backed by Caring. That may not be a name you've heard of, but they're the parent company of Gucci. That's pretty high profile, even before you consider the fact that they also own Balenciaga, Saint Laurent, Alexander McQueen, and countless others. So yeah, that's a big fucking deal. It shows that Kirby has finally broken through fully into the luxury sphere. This isn't just elevated streetwear anymore, or whatever subtly denigrating terms people call modern black fashion. Instead, this is a full-on welcoming party for Kirby and Pierre into the society that has shunned them for so long. And it seems like that's all catching up to him at once, as he was also just named the CFDA's Menswear Designer of the Year. But really though, what is your friends in New York anyway? We don't really know. All we know so far is that it seems to be an all-encompassing home for events, fashion, music, art, and also philanthropy. That could kind of mean anything, but if I had to guess, I'd say that it'll be something like the big budget version of Shane Oliver's recent relaunch of Hood by Air, a space to boost important artistic voices and incubate fresh talent. It's pretty rare that a designer reaches the heights of the fashion world without any compromise. I mean, it's no surprise that so many designers hold contempt for the idea of commerce, as it tends to water down their creativity. But Kirby Jean Raymond and Pierre Moss have only seemed to grow more powerful as they've stuck to their beliefs even more fervently. It's like Kirby is the dominatrix to this fashion world. The more he points out how screwed up they are, the more they ask for more. And I have to admit, I'm one of them. I own four Pierre Moss pieces. We'll save one of those for a later day, but I want to talk about the other three because I actually think they speak to three distinct points along the brand's path. One of my go-to pieces from the brand is their cropped logo hoodie. The bold embroidered Pierre Moss pops in gold and is definitely an eye catcher. 
and the cropping is a unique twist on the silhouette for menswear, letting it stand apart from the pack. However, this is also a piece of the streetwear product that was holding Kirby back in a way. This hoodie, which I bought, was also one of the only things retailers wanted to buy from him. This held him back from showing the world all of the experiences he had to offer through Pierre Moss. Speaking of which, I also have one of those pieces that was likely harder to sell. It's a gray terry cloth jacket, far more refined than the hoodie, but it does have a frayed hem, which keeps that street voice intact. While this piece is definitely less in demand, it's also rarer and in my view, more special. Finally, I have this fantastic mauve snap-up turtleneck from the Reebok by Pierre Moss line. Again, that embroidered logo along the neck always has people approaching me and asking questions, which I love. And the fabrication here is amazing, a super soft and breathable synthetic fabric that gives it that slightly futuristic vibe that many of their Reebok pieces have. I love that I own this piece because it's a key part of what gave Kirby back the keys to his own kingdom and allowed him to start making the choices that aligned with his vision and his morals. So let me know, do you own any Pierre Moss pieces? And if so, where do they fall along this turbulent timeline we've laid out? And are you one of those people that can't stand Kirby? If so, I want to hear from you. I want to know why. And with that, I want to thank you for watching. Take a look at the other video on screen here, subscribe to my channel, like this video, and I'll see you next time.